Hello everyone, my name is Babarisa Olaiwala. I'm here to make mathematics understandable as possible. Today's video is on systems of linear equations. Let's talk about the contributors to systems of linear equations. Around 4,000 years ago, the Babylonian mathematicians knew how to solve a simple 2x2 two two system of linear equations with two unknowns documented in K-tablet. Solving simultaneous linear equations by method of elimination using counting board around 200 BC appears in the chapter 8, Franxing of Xuanxiang Xuanxu of the ancient Chinese mathematical text. A partial mathematician, Mohammed Musa al Khwarizm presented the first systematic solution of simple linear equations. An Italian mathematician, Gerolamo Cardano, gave a rule for solving system of two linear equations, which he called regular de modo, meaning mother of all rules. The rule later gave what was essentially known as Cramer's rule. A French mathematician, René Descartes, represented linear equations from computation of lines and planes and their intersections. A Japanese mathematician, Sekikowa, in 1683, developed a version of determinant for solving a linear system of equations. In 1693, a German mathematician, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, considered the first systematic methods for solving linear systems through determinants. A Swiss mathematician, Leonhard Holler, in 1750, showed that a system of the linear equations need not to have a solution. A French mathematician, Etienne Bezout, in 1764, proved that the non-trivial solutions of a system exist provided the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. Colin McLaurin, a Scottish mathematician, gave the published result on solving two 3 and 4 simultaneous equation via resultant, which is now known as determinant. In 1750, a Swiss mathematician, Gabriel Kramer, gave the general rule for solving n linear simultaneous equations in n unknowns explicitly, but provided no proof for it. In 1811, a German mathematician, Carl Friedrich Gauss, developed a method of least squares for finding the solution to an indeterminate system of linear equations. Let us now give this definition of systems of linear equations. A system of linear equations is a set of two or more linear equations involving the same set of variables. A general system of m linear equations with n unknown can be written as this. Where xi are the unknowns, ai are the coefficients of the system, and bi are the non-homogeneous constant terms. The other two forms of a system of linear equations are the vector form and the matrix form. The vector form is given in a linear combination as follows. Furthermore, the system can be written in a matrix form called matrix equation given as Ax equals B, Ax can also be expressed in terms of column linear combination. Therefore, we have our A in a matrix form and our X as a column vector and B as a column vector. The matrix A and B can be written together with a slash line. We denote it in this form. Where A is called the coefficient matrix and the B is called a constant term. Then the combination of the A and B is called the augmented matrix. Now A is an n by n matrix. X is a column vector with n entries, and B is a column vector with m entries. A solution of linear system is an assignment of values to the unknown variables, thereby satisfying each equation of the system. The solution set is the set of all possible solutions to the linear system. If a linear system has infinitely many solutions, then a set of parametric equations from which all solutions can be obtained by assigning numerical values to the parameters is called a general solution of the system. 
every system of linear equation has zero, one, or infinitely many solutions, there are no other possibilities. A linear system is linearly independent if none of the equation can be derived algebraically from the other. The linear system is linearly dependent if elementary row operations within rows can lead to one of the existing rows. Let's consider this example. We can see that we can use the elementary row of row 1 and row 2. When we add it together, we have R1 to be R2 plus R3. And which means that the R1 is linearly dependent. Then, inconsistencies of a system of linear equations occur when the system is linearly dependent. A dependent system has infinitely many solutions. An independent system has exactly one solution, paired at point where the two or more lines intersect. A linear system is inconsistent if it has no solution. A linear system is consistent if it has one or more solutions. A homogeneous system of linear equation is a linear system in which all of the constant terms are zero, that is AS equals zero. Then every homogeneous system of linear equation is consistent. A system of linear equation with an infinite number of solutions typically have free or parameters variables which are allowed to take any value while the remaining variables are dependent on the values of the free variables. The dimension of the solution set is equal to n minus m, where n is the number of variables and m the number of equations. Let's consider a simple illustration for the system of linear equations. The first one, let's say one equation, and let's represent that with a car, and then the road with a line. Now, wherever the car stops, that gives us the solution. So it can stop at many points. And at this, we have many solutions to that. It means that we have infinitely many solutions. And for this kind of a system, it must be consistent. Let's consider another one for the two equations, but we have type one. For the type one, we will consider two equations. The first, let's call it a car and, and the line. Then the next one, let's uh, use a shape for that and then that's another line at this point they meet at a particular point let's refer that as uh, maybe the bridge that link the two together and then at this point we have a single unique solution and that system is consistent let's talk about another type the type 2 for the type 2 we have the same shape and car to use in that case now we see that if two of them do not meet, then it means there will be no solution because they are parallel. And in that case, the system is inconsistent. And the next one is, let's consider three equations. And for the three equations, we have type 1, 2. In this case now, we are going to make use of three entities. The first is the car, then the next is uh, the shape, and then the next is uh, the plane. Now, we can see that the, the shape and the car meet at one point so in this case there is no solution because the system is inconsistent if you look at the point of each of them they do not meet at a single point then the next is the type 2 and for the type 2 we are still going to make use of the three of them now in this case three of them meet at one point therefore there is a single unique solution and for this kind of the system it means that it is consistent a system of linear equations is inconsistent if the rank of the augmented matrix is greater than the rank of the coefficient matrix. If the ranks of the augmented matrix and the coefficient matrix are equal, then the system must have at least one solution. The solution is unique if and only if the rank equals the number of variables. Otherwise, there are infinitude of solutions. If AS equals B is a consistent linear system of M equations in N unknowns and EA a has rank R, then the general solution of the system contains N minus R parameters. Consider the behavior of linear systems. A linear system is underdetermined if there are more unknowns than the number of equations. That is, the unknowns are greater than the equation. Then, your underdetermined system are usually consistent with infinitely many solutions, but the systems can sometimes be inconsistent. It is not possible 
for an underdetermined system to have a unique solution. Let's consider this example. For this example, we see that the unknowns have 3, why the equation is 2. Then it means this system is an underdetermined system. A linear system is overdetermined if there are more equations than unknowns, that is, the equation greater than the unknowns. Overdetermined systems are usually, but not always, inconsistent. Such system has no solution. Let's consider this example. In this case, we have three equations and two unknowns. So this is overdetermined. A linear system that is neither overdetermined nor underdetermined is called critically determined. Several methods of solving linear system. Let's consider the first, which is the matrix method. Under the matrix method, we have the Gauss elimination method, the Gauss Jordan elimination method, we have the triangularization method, the Kramers rule method, the Koleski method, the partition method, and the inverse method. Then we have the direct method. Under this direct, we have the elimination method, we have the substitution method, we have the graphing method, we have the cross multiplication method. Then we also have the iterative method, such as the SOR method, the Jacobi iterative method, and the Gauss Seidel iterative method. But there are other methods also that we do not mention in this video. Now try this exercise. A. State if the following systems are overdetermined, underdetermined, or critically determined. B. What is the dimension of the solution set of each system? The first question we have three equations and five unknowns. This is three equations and three unknowns, three equations and two unknowns, two equations and three unknowns. Then this is a three, four equations and three unknowns, and this is four equations and then four unknowns. So pause the video, try it, and we are going to give you the solution, but you try first. Okay, the first is underdetermined. The second equation is critically determined. The third is overdetermined. The fourth equation is underdetermined. The fifth equation is overdetermined. And the last equation is critically determined. Why the solution for B will not be displayed here, but we are going to be given in the next video. If you like this video, please click on the like and the subscribe button for more videos. And don't forget to drop your comment. Thank you.